From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Augusta McDonald and for Diane Parker. On Saturday, April 19th, Belgrade residents woke up to the sound of gunshots. MTN's Jolie Sally shares what we've learned so far about an incident that happened on Mantle Drive. That's North Belgrade and it left one man dead. It happened just a few houses down from where I'm standing here in Belgrade. A man shot to death right outside of his house. On April 19th at 11.30 p.m., Gallatin County Dispatch received a call reporting several gunshots fired down 808 Mantle Drive and that a male had been shot and was not breathing. According to court documents, the man who reported the incident identified himself as Jordan Palmer. 44-year-old Palmer was seen in Gallatin County Justice Court Monday morning. According to the affidavit, he stated he was attacked by another man while putting something into the mailbox. That man was later identified as Stephen Campbell. Campbell was found lying here in front of these mailboxes when officers arrived. They noticed Campbell had two bullet holes in his chest. According to charging documents, Palmer, who lives down the road, was standing over Campbell's body and a pistol was lying on the ground right above Campbell's head. Palmer told officers, this guy just attacked me. I expletive shot him. Officers then detained Palmer, began performing CPR, and noticed multiple other bullet wounds on Campbell's body. Campbell was transported to the hospital where he later died. Stephen Campbell's family put these bright flowers out by the mailbox. In Belgrade, Jolie Salee, MTN News. Now we go inside the courtroom where a man accused of shooting three people, including his wife and teenage son in Billings last August, is now on trial. Daryl Bryant is facing three counts of attempted homicide. MTN's Charlie Kleps picks up the details from here. And you might actually remember that case. It all started here in Billings at the Golden Meadows Trailer Park, where police believed Bryant was inside the home and a standoff lasted for several hours. Turned out he wasn't there, and they ended up making the arrest in Stillwater County. Here's the video of that arrest. As you can see, Bryant exits the vehicle with his hands in the air. This video shot from the inside of the Columbus McDonald's. Charging the defendant, Daryl Colton Bryant, with the offenses of... Cal on Monday, Bryant's trial began with Judge Colette Davies addressing the jury. As such, your primary duty is to decide the disputed issues of fact. Followed by opening statements. He shot all three of them in the small living room of their trailer home. Bryant is facing multiple charges of attempted homicide and criminal endangerment after shooting his wife and son that day, along with his son's friend. Court documents say Bryant kicked down the front door of the home they were in and started firing before the three escaped. Why would a father chase down, break down a door, and shoot to kill his 16-year-old son? All three survived and will likely appear as witnesses. Bryant then allegedly fled the scene with his girlfriend and was arrested later that day. The state encouraged the jury to use their common sense. But as you sit through this trial, please pay attention to the details. But the defense argued that there was more to the story. This American dream was an absolute nightmare for Daryl and he was trapped in a real life Groundhog Day. Saying that Bryant was justified in his reaction that day due to his abusive living situation. Even if you do find that he intended to kill or cause serious bodily injury, you'll find that he was justified in each of these actions as he protected himself from the immediate fear he felt. The first witness was called to the stand Monday afternoon and the trial is expected to take up to five days and will continue Tuesday morning. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A Billings woman is now charged in the hit and run death of Laurel resident Cassie McCauley. 40 year old Amber Walter is accused of striking McCauley on January 31st near the railroad tracks on East Main Street in Laurel, then fleeing the scene. Walter told police she believed she hit a deer and left because she didn't notice much damage to her vehicle. McCauley's mother found Cassie's body in the ditch on February 4th after days of searching. Walter is facing up to 10 years in prison, charged with failing to stop at an accident scene involving a death. And the bench trial of the man accused of killing two brothers in Three Forks continues this week. This is the second trial for Zachary Norman. In the first trial, the jury was hung on the deliberate homicide charges. Norman is charged with killing Brendan and Chase Estabrook. Norman is claiming he acted in self-defense when he shot and killed the Estabrook brothers. That bench trial, which means the, uh, that's a bench trial, which means the judge will decide guilt or innocence. And it's expected to wrap up later this week.
And good Tuesday afternoon, everyone looking outside live around all of Montana, looking pretty nice on this Tuesday. Very few clouds, just a couple here and there, and the wind not very strong either. Ridge of high pressure starting to build overhead. Now, most of the regions in the 50s, however, as you can see, my hometown of Dillon, the cool spot, of course, is the coolest. 47 degrees right now, but then you head further to the north and east, up to the mid to upper 50s. Glasgow right now, home of the Scotties, 60 degrees right now, but most everybody in the 50s, both in Montana and Wyoming. And just about everyone at least as warm as yesterday, if not slightly warmer. We're going to have a bigger warm-up coming on Wednesday, and then some other changes are also coming, including rain and even some more snow of our forecast in a few minutes. The Forest Service says firefighters have contained a small wildfire just west of Helena. Crews responded to the fire near Priest Pass on Saturday. That fire burned about eight acres and was human caused, according to the Helena Lewis and Clark County National Forest. This is the first significant human caused forest fire of the season. An investigation on that fire is underway. Forest officials are asking the community to please take caution with campfires. And a viewer in St. Ignatius reached out to MTN wanting to know why the town's only water tower was leaking. We went Went to uh, St. Ignatius to find the answer and found that a drain on the bottom side of the tower was leaking. An official with the town said the leak was first noticed about two weeks ago, but there are no impacts to residents' utilities at this time. A crew will scuba dive in the tower in a few weeks to inspect the damage and clean out that tank. This is part of maintenance that's supposed to happen every three years and was done two years ago. St. Ignatius is already fighting a problem with their sewer system that's been estimated to cost $6 million to fix. Now they can expect another repair bill on this soon. And filmmakers from Missoula are debuting a documentary this week about a historic cemetery in town. The Bodies Beneath Us tells the story of a Chinese cemetery at the base of Mount Jumbo near Cherry Street. The remains of some Chinese residents in Missoula are buried underneath the new houses that stand there. The documentary also addresses a mass gravesite underneath Rattlesnake Elementary where the Missoula Poor Farm used to be. Bodies Beneath Us uses the two forgotten cemeteries to tell a larger story of the historic and current treatment of marginalized groups. The documentary premieres this Saturday, April 27th at the Covalite Theater in Butte. Producer of the film, Dylan Yance, says they're excited and nervous for the community to see the work product after two years. Um, I feel good about the premiere this weekend, although I'm a bit nervous about it. I think just when you work on a project for so long and no one's seen it, it's definitely nerve-wracking to have it go out and be public, but it'll be great. And the community has really showed up for us throughout the process of making the documentary and um, coming to the showings as well, so I think it'll be great. That movie will show at the Roxy in Missoula on May 6th and May 13th. Tickets for those shows are available now online. The latest details now about the Sunday kidnapping and escape that started in Missoula and ended in Kalispell. A woman who says she was kidnapped from Missoula jumped out of a moving car to escape her kidnapper. The suspect led numerous law enforcement agencies on a foot chase after escaping from a local hospital. MTN's Keanu Wilson has the latest on this investigation. A multi-county investigation is underway after a man allegedly kidnapped a woman on Sunday in Missoula, fled to Flathead County where he was arrested, escaped police, and was found and arrested again. According to Flathead County Sheriff Brian Hano, 24-year-old Adam Whiteman kidnapped a woman in Missoula who he had a relationship with. Around 9 a.m., the woman escaped at Highway 2 and 206 just outside of Columbia Falls and called police reporting she had been kidnapped. Yeah, I mean, essentially the vehicle was moving. Sounds like when the individual uh, did get out of the car. And um, so, yes, there was some minor injuries, but uh, they were they're not being held currently at the, at the hospital. Whiteman was arrested the first time near Marias Pass after a foot pursuit. He was then taken to Logan Health for an evaluation. While being brought back to the police car, he escaped and ran from the police again. A foot pursuit took place across Buffalo Hills Golf Course, and the suspect was found in Lawrence Park. It does happen in our world, um, you know, when you have individuals that are trying to run. So in this scenario, I will take this as a positive in the fact that, you know, yes, he did escape for a brief period of time. Uh, none of our officers were injured. He was not injured, and he was brought back into custody. Whiteman is being held at the Flathead County Detention Center and faces at least eight charges. 
Montana Highway Patrol, Kalispell Police, and Columbia Falls Police assisted Flathead County and will all have to work together along with Missoula while investigating the case. It's important to realize that these take time to investigate properly. Um, so there's a lot of interviews, evidence collections, um, and then we're partnering with many agencies to try to gather all the information that occurred yesterday and then, um, you know, that will be passed to the county attorney's for charging. The investigation into the incident is ongoing and an initial court date has not yet been scheduled for Whiteman. In Kalispell, Kiana Wilson, MTN News. Coming up next, Jason is in with another check of today's weather. Plus, we'll have your ag report in just a few minutes. Stay with us. The MTN Noon News continues right after this.